Hello everyone, welcome to November, which means it's time for our o October wrap up. Um, so what books did I read in October? I'll be honest, October was not the best month for reading for me. I, um, your girl has been really stressed with school. I've been having to go travel um, at least once a week to another university that is two and a half to three hours away. Um, as you can imagine, uh, the stress load has increased for me. Um, in addition to that, I um, was blessed to go on a mission trip um, this past week. And uh, I went to Ecuador, which I absolutely loved. I loved that trip. Um, the people are so nice and so sweet. I did get a cold, as you might hear in my voice, my voice cracking a little bit. Um, it's not COVID. I tested negative for COVID and um, I've had COVID before. This is definitely not COVID. It's not nearly as bad. Um, but because I was on a mission trip, I was busy. I was on the go. And so I didn't have time really to read. I just had my quiet time in the morning and that was it. So that whole trip, I didn't get any reading done. Um, so that's a whole week that I lost in reading. Um, and so I did not accomplish as many uh, books as I had hoped to this past month. So uh, this will probably be a very short video, which that's okay. We have those months. Um, so for starters, I had some goals in mind of what books I wanted to read. And I don't think I've finished any of those books <laughs> that I had set for myself to do. Um, I did DNF uh, one book, which was a book that I was like, oh, let me try this book um, because, you know, I thought it'd be a good book for October. Um, but... I did not finish it. And that book is Dracula. Um, I was listening to it, um, an audio version, and I actually tried two or three different versions in, in the audio version because I was having a hard time once I got to, uh, I don't remember what chapter, I think it's chapter six. Um, I just kept getting tired, like listening to it. I could not focus. I was trying I kept listening to the same chapter over and over again and I just could not focus anymore and so yeah I did not finish the book I ended up DNFing it because I mean it was interesting from the start but you know the fact that I listened to the same chapter over and over again wasn't a good sign and also so when I first started listening to the book I was like, okay, this is interesting. This is fine. You know, I was very skeptical about it because it is like, I mean, it's Dracula, you know, which is like, you know, evil type stuff. Um, I hear that it is uh, a story that's really um, somewhat about Catholics, I guess. Like there's a Christian theme behind it, um, which I was interested to see what that was. Um but, and you guys might think I'm crazy. Sometimes, you know, I talk to some people like from my church and stuff. Um, sometimes I think I'm kind of crazy when I bring stuff like this up. But um, I feel like I do have a gift of discernment and I can feel, um, I can feel good presence. And I also can feel bad presence. And I felt fine, you know, listening to the audio book, um, you know, the first part of the book. Um, you know, it didn't bother me, but for some reason, when I got to this part of the book, I did feel a kind of uneasy feeling and the content wise, it didn't seem like it was bad, but I didn't know if that was like the Holy Spirit trying to tell me, okay, Stacy, uh, this is not for you. You, you know, you don't want to continue to read this book. Now, I might have just been going crazy. I don't know. Everything that I've read on reviews says that it's not a bad book. 
like even Christians, it's safe for Christians to read. Um, so I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe it was just like one or two little things here and there that might've been, um, something that, um, God might not like. Um, but you know, I, 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 like I said, I was re listening to the same chapter over and over again. The first time I didn't have that feeling, but the last time, the second time I felt that. And then the, when I played it again, I felt it again. And so I, like I said, like listening to the content, it didn't really sound really bad. I mean, some of it was kind of weird, like him eating birds and, you know, that's where, that's around the area where I was at. Um, I mean, it was, I mean, if I saw it on the cartoon, that wouldn't bother me. So it wasn't like it was scary or anything like that. But like I said, I had this, just this feeling, um, on the, on the inside of me that was like an uneasy feeling that I feel like God was trying to tell me stop reading this book. Um, and maybe it was just for this time in this season in my life. Again, I am still interested about the Catholic aspects. Like what is the message they were trying to say? But right now God is obviously telling me to not read the book. Plus I kept falling asleep and not being able to actually, you know, at first I was like, oh, you know, this is an interesting story. But then I, it was just very hard to keep up. Uh, I've just been very tired and stressed lately. So I DNF the book. Will I read it again? Uh, will I pick it up again? I don't know. We will see. But I did not accomplish that goal. I, I had the goal of reading one of those classics, Dracula or Frankenstein and all that. I did not accomplish that goal this month at all. Um... I had some other books that I said that I was going to read the, this past month as well, which I started reading, but again, because I was busy, I did not finish. So the only books that I actually finished this past month were all audio books. Um, with the exception of da, 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 the Bible and the Apocrypha. So I had set the, the goal last year around this time to go through the Bible in a year. I've never read the Bible in one year. I've read it, the fastest I've read it was in two years, um, but typically I, I, I generally take a long time to get through the Bible, um, you know, and I've read through the Bible before and I, um, I believe it took me four years to get through it when I was just going through it without like a plan. And then I had a plan and it was a two year plan and so I'd gone through it in two years. And so this was my third time reading all the way through. And it took me one year. And it actually wasn't that bad. I thought that it would take me a long time each morning to read. But I actually listened to it while I was reading it. And that helped me get through it a lot faster. Um, and then I also finished the Apocrypha, which... I know some people in the Protestant community don't um, read the Apocrypha. It's not in our Bible, um, but it is in the Catholic Bible and in the Orthodox Bible. And so I've read it before because I was just curious. And so I'm familiar with the stories in there. I, you know, this is my second time reading through the Apocrypha. And um, I finished that this month as well. Um, Again, I personally, I don't have any issues with the Apocrypha. I think there's some great information in there. Um, now, if you were to ask me if it's considered Holy Scripture, I am not a church father. I am not a priest. I am not a pastor. I don't feel as though I have the authority to state what is considered to be Scripture and what is not considered to be Scripture. So there are people who are out of that authority that can make those decisions but whether it is scripture or not it's they they are still books and there's information historical information that brings in perspective about how things were during those times how things were leading up to the new testament which i think can be very valuable to know and understand and so that's why i read it i actually really enjoy the apocrypha there's prophecies about Jesus in there um not to confuse anyone or anything like that but I do enjoy it and I especially enjoy when I read about the prophecies 
Now, some people will say, well, they added Jesus's name later. It doesn't matter to me. That's fine. That could be an argument people can make. I'm not here to argue theological, theological concepts about the Apocrypha. It's just something, like I said, that I enjoyed reading. And I will read it again, probably this coming up year again. Um, so I did finish those uh, this month. Um, big accomplishment. Um, I did start reading the, what is it called? Instead of the Bible, I just taking a little break from reading the Bible through. I'm reading the Action Bible, um, which here, let me show you. This is the Action Bible. You've probably seen this before. This is um, for kids, mostly. Um, it's like a comic book, and they have pictures. And so because I just did that intense, you know, going through the Bible in a year, and because my life is really stressful right now, I figured, you know, it's a perfect time to read this because I had a copy of it, and I always wanted to read it. So this is what I'm doing for my quiet time right now. Um, you know, I probably get through this relatively fast because I'm already here. Um, and I've started a couple of weeks ago. So I'll probably be done. Um, I'm reading about three stories a day from in here. And so I might get done in a couple of months if I, you know, keep at this pace. Um, so obviously this, this is not going to take me a year to get through but it gives me a break being that, you know, I'm a little stressed, I guess, or I have a lot going on. Um, so I don't have to do like a really in-depth study right now. Um, but after this, I'll seek God and see what he wants me to do. If he wants me to go back to reading the Bible or do topical studies or devotionals. Um, but right now, uh, this is what I'm doing for my quiet time and um, just for a little break. Okay, back to the books that I read this month. So, um, yeah, so five stars, obviously, for the Bible and for the Apocrypha. Um, then I had a few audio books that I also uh, read through this month. So the first one I actually had introduced to you guys uh, when I said that, oh, you know, what books I plan on reading. And that is Jesus is Greater Than Your Religion. Um, so I did finish this book. Um, I had an audio book form. I gave it four stars. Um, it was a, a good book. Um, I don't think I wrote a review. Yeah, I didn't write a review on this one. Um, I mean, it was interesting. It, it kind of reminded me of a book that I DNF, but the theology was better. Um, so I actually DNF'd, um, in search for Sundays, I believe is, is what it was called. Um, and this book is kind of similar. Um, so it's called Jesus greater than your religion. Why he is so much better than trying harder, doing more and being good enough by Jefferson. Beth, 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 I don't know. I don't know how to say that. Um, Beth. Um, and so it was, pretty much, you know, not, it's, it's about your relationship with Jesus, you know, um, and, and, you know, I thought it was interesting when he got to those controversial topics that he actually took a more conservative view as opposed to a progressive view. Um, I, I, you know, I'm not opposed to some people thinking more progressive about certain topics, but especially with topics that are clear in the Bible, I do have issues when people clearly go against what the Bible says about it and try to rewrite scripture and say, oh, you're not acting like a Christian if you're doing such and such and such. Um, I think the scripture is clear on certain things and I think some things, Jesus is cutthroat. Like everyone wants to focus on Jesus being nice, healing the sick, being loving. But the truth of the matter is when he come, when he coming back, he going to judge like literally like that is an attribute of him. And people don't want to like, they try to ignore that part, but it's true. I mean, God really does hate sin. So, uh, four stars. I'll be honest. I don't really remember everything from this book cause it was so long ago. Um, 
but I did give it four stars. So uh, definitely I would recommend it um, to you guys. Okay, the next book um, that I read, I actually did a video on, a separate video on, but I haven't uploaded it yet because I've been busy. Uh, but I will still upload it, so stay tuned for that. This one will be uploaded before that one, um, just because it's the beginning of November, so I need to get this one up. But it is, <coughs> sorry, you guys. <coughs> it is the first book of Adam and Eve, translated by Rutherford Hayes Platt. Um, so I showed this in the, my video, um, that I did, um, pretty much it is about Adam and Eve. It is a fiction book about Adam and Eve, which was written, um, before Christ. So this is a book that was written before Christ. And so it was based off of oral traditions that were stated. Um, and then eventually somebody wrote it down into the book. Um, now, whether everything in this book is fact or fiction, that is what's debated. Listening to it, I will say that there's definitely parts that's fiction in here, but there's parts in here that could be fact based off of things that actually happened to Adam and Eve. Um, but some people I know have a problem with that, like thinking that through, um, because they think that, you know, if it's not in the scripture, if it's not in the Bible, then we don't deal with it at all. Um, I don't take that view and I know that is controversial for a lot of people. Um, but for me, I feel that it helps me, you know, with my walk. I believe in the Bible that I don't have doubts about the Bible. I don't have doubts about the Bible being Holy scripture. Um, so I am okay with reading other books, just like people currently write Christian books. Um, people write stories about the Bible, uh, based off of the Bible, um, they do that now. They did that back then. And this is one of those first books which were based off of Bible characters from the Bible. And um, there's actually some principles that are found in the, the, this book that we find in the Bible. Um, so these stories were definitely recognized by the people in the Bible. Um, you know, this is just one story. There's other stories that aren't that that were books. There's hundreds and hundreds of books that were written um, during the time of the Bible based off of the Bible um, that's not considered Holy Scripture. Um, does it mean that they are heresy? That it's like, oh, don't read this? Well, then if we say that, then the books that we have now, the Christian books that we have now, then we would have to say it's all heresy. Some of them might be heresy, yes, but that doesn't mean they're all are. And again, this is known to be a fiction. It's known to not have things in it that is completely true um, and that was well known by you know the the people um, so I gave I actually really enjoyed it the video I go into more detail about five stars I absolutely love this book I want to get a paper copy of it um, it's called the first book of Adam and Eve so it makes me wonder if there's a second and third book it probably is um, but I really did love the story um, not everybody likes it. I talked to someone and, and they didn't like it, but uh, I really did enjoy it. Um, the next book that I listened to is Find Your People. Oh, here we go again. Sorry, you guys. Find Your People by Jenny Allen. So Jenny Allen is, um, she works with the If Gathering. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of the If Gathering. Um, it's a woman's conference. Uh, my, my old church used to have the if gathering at its church, uh, where they would have the, the gathering on a video and, uh, we would come and watch it and do activities at the church with the other women. Um, so she wrote this book about find your people. Um, we know that today people are having a hard time making friends. Um, it, people are in their bubble, they're on social media, they're staying in their house, they're not socializing. Um, and so this book was actually an encouragement about finding your village, your, your people that, um, you know, you could do life with. 
And um, she actually speaks about her experience of moving to Dallas, which I live in the Dallas area. Um, when you're in a big city, um, finding your community can be a little difficult because, you know, if you're commuting, you might have to commute an hour. Um, so you you might make friends at your job, but they're an hour away. So you can't just like hang out with them easily because you live an hour away, you know, things like that. Um, so she actually, she discussed the importance of having a community and she gives you some great advice on how to establish your own community, um, how to find people to, to make your community. And so um, I um, personally, I know I have a lot of friends. I have a ton of friends. I'm just that type of person. I love people. Um, but I would like to have people that are, um, you know, what I would say my close community that, that is near where I stay, uh, where I could easily just be like, hey, let's go grab something for lunch or let's go hang out. Um, and so it was just an encouragement to hear her story, hear her ideas, um, you know, for that, um, because it is difficult. You know, some of my closest friends literally lives four or five hours away. There's no way that I'm going to be able to see them on a regular basis, right? So I have to have people that are nearby. Uh, we all do. And I know some people, they're like, oh, well, I have my friends. I don't need new friends. What if something happens? You know, what if there's an emergency? You want to have someone that you can trust that's nearby. Um, you know, you need people that you can depend on that can help you. Um, so um, I gave that book. Um, where did I get that book? Five stars. It was a good book. All right. I listened to just because, you know, I was on my thing, my free audiobooks and it came up and it was really short. I was like, why not? Uh, Patrick Henry's Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death. It was like two minutes. I listened to it. it I gave it four stars. Um, it was interesting. And then my last book, is this my last book? Yes. The last book that I listened to, again, not a whole lot of books, you guys, is Happy Prince. This is a classic um, by Jane Ray. Um, and the reason why I listened to this one is because my old, uh, one of my old ballet schools did a ballet called Happy Prince. And it's based off of this story, Happy Prince. I will be honest, I did the ballet and I was totally confused on what the story was. I had no idea what was going on. I didn't know the story. That is one of the problems with some ballets, like it, depending on the choreographer and how they choreograph it, they may or may not actually choreograph it in such a way that you know the story. And you might have to read a lot in the program to really see what's going on, which I personally think that when you create a show, you try to do it in such a way where you don't need to read a whole lot and you can just see what's going on. Yeah, I had no idea what was going on and I was one of the performers. Um, so when I listened to the story, it was actually a cute story. It was a short story about a statue and a bird and um, them doing good things for people. Um, it was kind of like a symbolic of Jesus, so to speak. Um, so it was, it was a nice, it was a nice story. Definitely short. I definitely still don't really see how the ballet was this. Sorry, um, Ms. Shields, if you watch this, um, I don't really remember. I remember seeing a statue that was painted gold in our ballet, but I don't remember a bird anywhere. I'm sure there were birds. There were other things going on. It was her own interpretation. There were moths. There was no moths in the story. I have no idea where, where the moths came from. Um, so there you have it. Uh, I gave it four stars. It was a cute short story. This would be a good story for kids. Um, 
and adults. It's just short and sweet, has a good meaning. I will say kids might not get the meaning as well. High school students probably will, um, but I don't know if children would. So, look, I talk too much. I did not have a whole lot of books, but I still made a 25-minute video, you guys. I don't know. I just like being in front of the camera, I guess. So, um, all right. So those are the books that I finished this month. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books. So a lot less than what I normally uh, finish, but that's okay. We have those months. Um, you know, it's November. We're going to have Thanksgiving break. The semester is coming to an end. I will be done collecting data for this semester here in a couple of weeks. So I will have some time. So hopefully next month I'll have a little bit more accomplished with the books um, that I read. But, you know, if not, hey, that's, that's just life. It's okay. It's not, you, we're in no competition with anybody on here. You know, even if it was just one book I finished. That's great right so all right if you've heard of any of these books if you've heard of like the happy prince which is a classic or you know any of the other books um, leave a comment down below about what you thought of those stories um, you know and would you recommend them for people to read like the first book of Adam and Eve would you recommend people read that or is that something you would say Stacy that's not for people to read like you might be reading it, but that's not for the general people to read. Um, so let me know down below and I will see you guys on my next video, which will be a video that I've recorded before this video because I actually have quite a few videos that I made, but I have not uploaded it yet because like I said earlier, I've been busy, but that's all right. So I will see you guys next time. Have a good rest of your day. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.